All right. Here we go. Um, oh, Carolyn says, don't know why my video isn't working. Or Mike, oh, Carolyn, that's because we're in a webinar and you're an attendee. So that means that unless we give you permission, you cannot speak and we will not see you. You are a just a disembodied <laughs> attendee right now. Um, okay. Awesome. That that goes for everybody who's attending. Um, don't worry. We know you're there and we can communicate with you. <laughs> we just won't hear your voice or see your face today. Um, and with that, let's let's get started. So um, I would like to open our session today by expressing my gratitude that we are able to gather today virtually on the shared unceded territories of the Squamish Nation and the Lilawat Nation. We are so lucky to live, work, and play on these territories. Stories. And I'm going to do a shameless program pitch because the library is partnered with the Squamish Lilwak Cultural Center for a series called Breaking Bannock. And each session, I interview one of their staff about what a day in the life is like at the SLCC, but also how they came to work there. Uh, most of them were um, Indigenous youth ambassadors, so how they came to be a part of that program, um, and sort of just the ins and outs of how the SLCC works. Um, the next session is this time next Thursday, so March, uh, May 27th at noon on the SLCC's Facebook page. Um, and we're going to do all through June because June is Indigenous History Month. So there'll be lots of episodes coming. Um, my, my name is Jeanette Bruce, by the way. <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, um, thank you so much for being here. I am the program coordinator at the Whistler Public Library. And it has been my pleasure for the last several months to co-host this series with the good people of MAC, Whistler's Mature Action Community. Um, this series has just been a joy. And um, to, this is our last session of Lunch and Learn until the fall, hopefully. Um, but all of the videos are still available to watch if you missed any of the sessions um, that you they can be found on the library's YouTube page that's the easiest place to find them so if you missed any sessions you can go to our YouTube page and find those I'll pop the link to our page in the chat uh, in a moment and in terms of zoom housekeeping today there's not very much as I was saying uh, before my intro um, because we're in a webinar, you are not, uh, you don't have access to your microphone or your video. So you can just sit back and relax and have a listen as, um, as Marianne begins her presentation. Um, if you have questions for Marianne, you can either use the chat or you can use the Q and A function. I'm going to be keeping, keeping an eye on both and you are welcome to ask questions throughout this presentation. Um, so no need to wait until the end. If you have a burning question about something that Marianne says, you can just pop your question right into the chat or the Q&A and we will answer it. Um, right before I pass you along to Marianne, I do want to just remind everybody that um, the library, unfortunately, um, still does not have access to um, our email and our files because of the ongoing cybersecurity incident at the RMOW. So if you need to get in touch with anybody at the library, your best bet is to go in person during our open hours. We, they love to see you in there. Um, or there is a number that you can call um, voice mail is not working right now so you need to just call until you connect with a human being <laughs> during open hours and I will pop that phone number in the chat as well just in case any of you have been trying to get in touch with us and haven't been able to okay that's enough talking from Jeanette um, we are um, really lucky to have our speaker with us today. Marianne is a recreation programmer at Meadow Park Sports Center. I'm sure her face is familiar to many of you, if not <laughs> all of you. Um, Marianne, take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Jeanette. Hello, everybody. Um, it's so fun to be here today. I really appreciate being asked to come and talk. And I feel like I'm representing all of um, all of us here at the Sports Center who lead fitness classes and uh, personal training and stuff like that. But uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm the voice today. <laughs> so, and uh, hopefully I will uh, answer any questions you guys have. But my presentation today is about being active for life. Um, one of the physical literacy um, components in the grand scheme of physical literacy is being active for life. And that's continuing on being active long after we've done whatever sport we've enjoyed or uh, you know, raising children or having full-on careers. It's the continuation. It's just this 
long spectrum of being active for a long time. And uh, Jeanette, if we move to the next slide, we've got Plato who, you know, I study political science, everybody. So, you know, I have to quote Plato every once in a while. Um, he specifically talked about how important physical exercise was, not just um, for the good of the body, but for the good of the mind. So being physically active is good for the body, it is good for the mind. So uh, the ancient Greeks knew you got to move and hence, you know, the birth of the Olympics and all that, but, but you got to move every day. It's not just stimulating for the physical body, it's stimulating for the intellect, stimulating for the mind and so on. So um, if we move on to the next slide, I'm just gonna share a little story because I think it's it's very pertinent to Whistler. We have such a young community and I do believe that our community is aging in place more and more, which is awesome. But we do hear the stories of seniors needing to leave town because um, of affordability, which is what the Mac is working on. So I'm not even gonna touch that one with a 10 foot pole today, but for lack of, um, fitness or wellness. So it is It is up to each individual to really take that bull by the horns. And I'm empowering you today that you can do this, um, that it is within our, all of our um, ability to, to, to do that, to stay active, stay moving so that we can be in, in the place that we love to, to live and do the things we still love to do, albeit things change. I'm not gonna, you know, sugarcoat this. Oh, hi, Buster. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it, of course. As we age, we get um, older. We The body gets older, the body changes. That's life. So, uh, But we can stay active and enjoy a, a good quality of life as long as we push ourselves that little bit every day. Uh, we can go on to the next slide, which is a very boring slide. Um, hang on. I, I need to unshare and share because Buster stepped on something. <laughs> Let us gallywag. Hang on, hang on. Stand by, everybody. You bet. <laughs> My gosh. Come on, man. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. This is a kind of perfect little pause, too, because the next slide's pretty boring. But we're going to just quickly get some cred with the next slide. Oh, oh hang on. This, there you uh, go. That one right there. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Ah, so proceed. Yeah, proceed. Here I go. Um, we all know exercise is good for us. This is not news. But when, what this slide just wanted to just, I just wanted to point out is that it is evidence based research that proves that exercise, and exercise sometimes is a dirty word, but movement is good for you every day, whether it's the Canadian Institute for Health Information, the World Health Organization, Statistics Canada, the United Nations for uh, principles for older persons these there's it goes on and on the international research out there proves it and I know you guys probably already live it so that's I just wanted to get some some cred behind uh behind my uh postulating all right next slide <laughs> so uh, my one of my favorite expressions is move it or lose it it is a classic and it is a classic because it's absolutely true so um it's our responsibility to stay well. Uh, we can help ourselves. Exercise is medicine. Medicine meaning that every day you move, you're moving and pumping blood through your body. You're getting the joints lubed up and you're getting oxygenated blood to the brain as well. So show up. Don't allow the excuses to, to filter in because they do. And, you know, sometimes you do need a rest day. I get it. Everybody needs a rest day. But, um, you know, whether it's going to be trying a new class to, you know, stretch your limits a little bit, get out of your comfort zone, even hobbies can be, you know, a good, can be vigorous and they, you can also meet new, new friends that way and really connect with the community outside of your home. So move it or lose it. And then um, I'm going to move on to the next slide where we talk about the benefits of exercise for older adults. So I'm a firm, you know, believer. I might be preaching to the converted here too. I'm not sure, but the benefits of exercise for older adults is out there. The information is clear that exercise, especially um, impact exercise, meaning your weight bearing, 
helps to maintain bone density. And that's critical as we get older um, to maintain bone density because we don't, we don't build bone density anymore. We've got a bone bank that we, we built up till the age of about 35. And then it's up to us to maintain that bone density with resistance exercise or impact exercise. Impact just meaning you're bearing your own weight. Um, another benefit of course is to um, help with posture imbalance which will also help with fall prevention. And uh, one of the last things we want to do is have a tumble, an unexpected tumble. Um, and if you are going to have a tumble, you want to have good bone density so that you can resist the fall better with stronger muscles and stronger bones. Um, absolutely, exercise slows the progress of disease. So in my uh, experience, I'm working with two um, clients who both have Parkinson's. I've been working with them for three to five years. I actually can't remember how long. It's been a long time. Um, and we have definitely, they're working three days a week. They're disciplined. They're coming in, they're getting coaching sessions or personal training sessions, whatever you'd like to call it. And we have definitely slowed the progress of the disease. We don't eliminate disease necessarily uh, with park, exercise and Parkinson's. However, the disease can be slowed down so that quality of life is longer uh, while managing the disease. And then of course, mental health and wellness, which when I originally wrote this uh, presentation was before COVID and I've kind of tweaked it here and there, but man, are we aware <laughs> of our mental health uh, during this COVID time. And exercise is one of the first uh, prescriptions that a medical doctor will tell you when you're not feeling mentally on your game. They're gonna say, have you been moving? Have you been going outside, getting some fresh air? Um, I mean, my grandma said it, my mom said it, you know, outside, move those, move your feet, get some fresh air. So absolutely a huge benefit. Uh, there's more on the next slide. There's more benefits. It's absolutely proven that uh, cognitive abilities of the brain are challenged with exercise. Uh, you know, learning the coordination of exercises um, is great for the brain because you're teaching, you're forcing the brain to learn new movement patterns. You're working on your mobility and your flexibility. That's pretty much for everybody, but it's an absolute benefit as we grow older to stay flexible and to have that range of motion, that mobility in the joints. Um, and it will slow the degenerative loss of skeletal muscle. And that's called sarcopenia. It's a natural part of aging. We lose muscle mass with age. And so what we want to do with exercise is slow the loss of muscle because we need that muscle to support our joints. We need that muscle to do the things we like to do um, and enjoy every day to its fullest. So it is a huge, um, huge, building muscle and maintaining muscle mass is a huge benefit to exercise. And then the next slide is gonna talk about our social component, which I think is the fun part. And it's definitely not to be ignored. It's 100%, a, well, let's just say it's a huge part of the social component is a huge part of the mental health part. So you're getting involved in your community, you're making sure that you're getting out of the house. Maybe it's an appointment with a friend to go for a walk or you're volunteering to walk dogs at WAG. So you have this community attachment or maybe you meet at the library and then you head out for walks or you head out for um, an afternoon of cross country skiing or something. Um, so all those appointments help you avoid social isolation, which is so tough right now. I mean, we're being told we have to physically distance and we have to have our bubbles. Um, and yeah, we don't want to change that important um, preventative measure so that we don't get ill. But you can have that engagement, that social engagement and stay safe. Wear your masks, you get a little close, make sure you're arms width apart, uh, and so on. And then that social component, um, you know, the building friendships, I don't think should be um, minimized whatsoever, you know, whether it's friends and family or taking pets for walks, maybe, I don't know, does Buster go for a walk? <laughs> you know, some cats do, I've seen them on leashes. <laughs> but, um, 
you know, if you've got a friend who has a pet, that should be your new best friend because that, that dog has to go for a walk every day, a couple times a day. Um, and then our, the young children that surround us, whether we're volunteering and reading stories at school, which I suppose right now is not 100% possible or not allowed in the schools, but in the future, um, or, you know, that um, hanging out with young people is invigorating. You know, they might drive us crazy a little bit, but they're not ours, so we can go home <laughs> when it's all said and done. <laughs> and then one of my favorites is moving to music. So dancing and music equals movement. You're going to move. You turn on the tunes, um, your favorites, some classics, something new, and it's going to be hard to sit still. So, and it's fun. You can do that with friends and just be silly and not have to worry about how you look or what the choreography is. Uh, just move every day. Uh, and music is a wonderful way to um, prompt the movement. And it's great for the brain. Moving to music is so good for your brain. Uh, there's more social component stuff on the next slide. So I was talking about creating the appointment. That's going to be, you'll see later on, it's in the tips for us for later on, but creating an appointment and getting out of the house, we all know it. It's 90% it's of the effort getting started. As soon as we start pedaling the bike or as soon as we start the walk or you know we've, we've met up with our friend, we know that was the hardest part. It's just, it's like breaking through the inertia, right? And I guarantee you that's, that's pretty much the same for everybody. And there are some outliers out there and those are the friends that we really wanna grab. And they're the ones who are like, let's go, I'm calling you tomorrow and we're going, you know? So, um, so yeah, so, so when it feels hard, just know you're not alone and you do have to give yourself that little kick in the pants sometimes. And having a date is the best way to have um, commitment to getting out the door. Um, and then, so the social component, I'm a group fitness instructor and I pro program and organize classes for group fitness. We've had some serious challenges this year, not gonna lie. It's been challenging organizing <laughs> group fitness, but uh, because of COVID that is. Um, but group fitness has got that wonderful social component to it. Uh, and you know, you arrive, you know, you're going to be familiar to the people in the room. Uh, the instructor is going to recognize you from last class, or maybe you're bringing a friend along with you so you don't feel alone. So it's, uh, it's like in that cheers episode, of course, I'm not going to tell you to go have a beer. <laughs> You do that later, but um, where everybody knows your name, right? You know, in that Cheers episode, you know, they'd walk in and everybody yell, Norm! Well, it can be like that for group fitness as well. So we are starting a whole new schedule for June where we'll be outdoors, um, but we'll talk about that later. But yeah, so that, that social part is, um, it's pretty important. And um, I think it's one of the things that gets us motivated. So on to the next slide, we've got some ideas for movement opportunities. And lots of these are available quite readily in town and others are not as readily available. And it's just simply a fact of either COVID at this point or um, some of these activities are available online. And um, I'm sure between the library and me, we could help find those things for you. But there's different types of movement, different types of exercise, different places you can do these exercise, and it all leads to the same thing. Movement is medicine, and as long as you're having fun moving and you're with the people you like, you're doing it right. <laughs> there's nothing, there's no wrong way to do it. Um, we've got yoga, and there's a ton of places in town that are still doing some stuff online. Uh, we've got chair exercise classes, which at the moment we don't have, but I'd be happy to bring those back. We've, we've run them before. Tai Chi is a picture that you see on the screen here. They're doing some Tai Chi in the park. Love this. It's so hard to find a good Tai Chi instructor, but you know, if we had to, we could work harder at it. And I know there's some available on, uh, you know, video and stuff online. Qigong is an awesome uh, martial art that uh, helps to move energy and is slow paced moving. Uh, weight training, of course, here at Meadow Park. We've got an amazing facility upstairs here in the sports center. 
uh, that is still open and is still available. And we do have um, uh, between 11 a.m. and 12.15 every day of the week, we have a vulnerable population hour in a quarter. So if you prefer to come during that time slot, you maybe would feel like you're more surrounded by your peers or you do have an underlying condition, you'd rather be around people who are a little bit more sensitive to that every day from 11 a.m. to 12 15 you do have to book the spot is our vulnerable hour but you still have to book it in advance but uh you know if you need a hand with that you can reach out to me i can help with that uh organizing a walking club here's another opportunity um we do have a class that has started it is right now currently on thursdays at 9 30 called the power walking workout and it's going to run in June on Tuesdays and Thursdays, independent of each other. Like you can join one day or the other. You don't have to join both. So uh, we've kind of tried to create that with a create a walking club type of activity twice a week in June. And then I know pickleball is popular. So that's not something I probably have to convince anybody about. But there's pickleball. And what's wonderful about pickleball is it's free. You can go play it on any court in the Valley. There's, I believe, almost all of them now are marked up with a pickleball um, court. The actual court is marked out. Bocce ball, shuffleboard, horseshoes, all these things that maybe you just see as a game. That is an opportunity for movement. Those are great place, great ways to move and enjoy being outdoors and having fun with friends. Aquafit, of course, I'm the Aquafit instructor right now in town, and uh, it's offered still two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, another wonderful low impact exercise idea um, that is out there for you guys. And then not to talk for too long, much longer, but tips for your first steps. So it's, it's, um, you kind of have to trick yourself. And I have an amazing story. I have a fun story of my parents-in-law who, when they moved to Whistler, and some of you guys might know Bill and Julie Deeks, um, when they moved to Whistler, um, they have since moved back to Collingwood, but they built a house and they purposely told their builder, their son, <laughs> put the kitchen and the fireplace on the top floor. And that way, every day we have to bring wood up the stairs or groceries up the stairs, and we will trick ourselves into having to move every day. That'll be the minimum. I mean, on top of the fact that they have dogs and one of their, besides the companionship and the love of dogs, one of the reasons they have dogs is the dogs need to go outside. Rain or shine every day, you know, at least in the morning and at night and, a, you know, a good strong walk in the afternoon. Um, so they quote unquote tricked themselves into making sure they move every day. And I think that's such a um, interesting philosophy. They knew if they didn't do that, it'd be easy to sit down <laughs> as it is, right? So other tips for your first steps, um, pack your bag the night before, put your shoes by the front door, lay out your outfit um, so that if you're headed to the gym, there's no like futzing about oh, I'm going to move on and do something else because I'm not ready. Do that the night before. Book an appointment with a friend, right? I've, I've already mentioned that a couple of times. And now what's even cooler about COVID, one of the bonuses is we do have to book an appointment to go to Aquafit. We do have to book the appointment to get to the weight room. So there's a little bit more planning and a little more commitment there. And you kind of, it sort of lends itself to sticking to that a little bit more, which is really, actually, I've heard from lots of people, actually one of the bonuses. Um, choose a class from the fitness schedule and sign up for it. So yes, you still have, you have to make appointments to sign up for fitness classes nowadays too. But um, grab a friend and say, hey, let's go give that Zumba class a, a try. Um, all the classes are available to everybody to give a try to. They're uh, the instructor, you know, if you're feeling a little bit nervous or whatever, you just, you introduce yourself. Hey, I'm new to this. What, what do I need to know to, to get get the most out of this class and they'll be so excited that you're trying it for the first time and they'll absolutely make it um, achievable for you that day. Uh, again, more appointments, making dates to go for a walk and that doesn't, that doesn't take anything fancy except calling a friend and then maybe promising to go for a coffee afterwards, which is always a lovely re uh, reward. Um, prioritize it. So 
if you want to see a change in your schedule, you have to make a change to your schedule. So you have to prioritize moving. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be an exercise class or a walking date. Maybe it's gardening. Maybe you're moving today is gardening. Maybe you're moving today is vigorous house cleaning. <laughs> like that could be a lot of work, right? Pushing the vacuum around, getting to those high reach places with dusting. Like that can be, that can be very hard work. So just prioritize that every day you're going to do something that gets you moving. Um, of course, buy a pass at the sports center. <laughs> I clearly work at the sports center, but any place, you know, there's tons of beautiful facilities in town. It doesn't have to be at Meadow Park Sports Center. Um, we do have free weight room orientations. Things are a little bit different these days as far as booking those. But if you do want to get an orientation to the weight room, we can definitely still make those arrangements. Um, and then I'm sure you guys are already all over this type of thing is volunteering. If you volunteer outside of the community, what that does is that get outside of your home, I should say, in the community, it gets you a date to go out and do something. And then maybe you tag on a walk to that or you tag on um, meeting a friend and so on. Uh, and then I, I wrote, start a dog walking club. <laughs> I just like throwing out any fun, fun ideas. So moving on, I think the next one is a schedule, which is so old, the screen, but it's just to give you an idea because I can't even print these schedules anymore right now <laughs> because of the internet being, um, well, not the internet, but our, our cybersecurity incident. But in general, we have quite an array of classes on the schedule and we do have a whole new June schedule coming out and I will share it um, to Kathy and Charlene so they can put it on the Mac page, the Mac Facebook page, um, as soon as I can get it typed up. <laughs> it sounds so silly, but I literally have it on marker and paper, but you know. Um, all right, let's move on to the next screen, please, Jeanette. And then of course, there's all these individual options. So if you're not like a group gap, group gal or group guy and you're like, okay, I want a little bit more personalized attention. I'm not comfortable doing this in a group. I want a space on my own. There's tons of ways to do that at the sports center. It does cost a little bit more. I'm not gonna you know, um, pretend that it doesn't, but at first you can start with the free weight room orientation. That's free. You do need to book an appointment, um, but then we have small group personal training where it's just you and two or three of your friends. And then of course there's one-on-one -on -one personal training that could be either 60 minutes or 30 minutes long. And that can be quite private now because we do actually use the fitness studio for personal training sessions where we can be alone in the room with you. And you don't have to worry about being in a busy weight room with lots of people. So there's lots of those options. Um, the next, I'm moving on to exercises for home. Exer so let's get everybody moving, okay? So up to Daisy, I'm gonna go through just this little sheet of exercises this screen here and maybe Jeanette what we'll do is um we can um show me now I'll demonstrate the exercises the screen itself has just a list of the exercises and uh, I might kind of free flow it too and based on if anybody has any questions before I even start moving does anybody have any questions before or because I do have a little list of exercises to show you and um all right, let's get started. No problemo. Thanks, Marianne. Yes, yeah. I'll remind everybody that if you if a question comes up at any point, just type it in the chat and I will pass it along to Marianne because she's not right at her screen um, as she's doing these exercises. So I'll read it out loud if you have a question. All right, perfect. Thank you, Jeanette. So first things first, you can do a whole array of exercises without any equipment whatsoever. I'm going to show you some ideas for equipment that you will have already in your home. So this is a grocery bag and I filled it up with some books. This is it. Nothing fancy. It's literally a reusable grocery bag and bingo, I've got a quote unquote dumbbell that I can use for all sorts of exercises, just a little extra resistance. And as I get stronger, I add more books. It's so easy. So this is a fun toy that it takes nothing at all, right? Um, the other thing I forgot to grab it, it's my scarf. So any scarf whatsoever can be used to do some stretching exercises or a towel. I just happen to have a scarf here, but it can be used for a towel. It can be used to do some stretching down on the floor. <laughs> 
So you can use a scarf. Um, the other thing that I didn't have, because I actually don't have these big jugs at home, but for anybody who has like big jugs of, you know, the four liter jugs of water or four liter um, gallon or four liter jugs of milk. So you would have those clean and empty. So if it's milk, you would make sure you clean it out empty, then fill it back up with water. Don't use it with milk. We don't want your milk to go bad. <laughs> An empty jug of milk or a big jug of water. And you so you would use them as dumbbells as, as well. So, and then you can fill it a quarter of the way, halfway or fill it up full. So you can play with the resistance of what it is you're starting, what you're, what you're using. So I just wanted to share that as, you know, if I'm grabbing a dumbbell or if I'm doing something, you're like, I don't have those toys. Well, you don't need anything fancy to do exercises at home. Um, the other one thing is a broomstick. So a broomstick and this, I, this is not a broomstick. This is a specific um, PVC pipe that I had cut up for this studio. But a broomstick is an awesome toy to be able to just use to do some leg swings. So if you guys are standing up, let's all do this together because now we're all gonna get moving together. So if you don't have a stick to hold on to, hold on to the back of your chair or put your hand up against the wall and just stand on one leg and crisscross your leg in front of your body, back and forth, so that you're literally crossing your midline, okay? We're gonna switch side, same thing, other side little crisscross action of the leg swinging. Just loosening off the hips, standing up tall, making sure the upper body is quiet while the leg swings in the hip socket there. Feel free, Jeanette, if anybody's coming up with questions, I'm happy to take questions whenever. I just, I see some little things popping up, but whatever, what you just pipe up, no problem. Okay. With the stick, oh yeah. No, that that's just me um, typing resources into the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> not questions. Far away. I'll no let problem. you know. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, so either you're gonna continue holding your stick, or say you have a scarf or a towel or something with you. This is an awesome stretch. One of my absolute favorites. I don't know if there's anybody here in our. Um, meeting today that goes to our fitness classes. We have Gentle Fit for Seniors. Can't believe I haven't mentioned that yet, but it's a three day a week program. It, you pay by the month. It's all online, so perfectly physically distanced. You can do it from your own home. And this is an exercise we do practically every warm up. Lovely stretch. Okay, now you're gonna take your either your stick or your scarf and keep it taut. So if you have a scarf, you're keeping it taut, you're gently pushing out to the side and you're gonna soften your knees and twist side to side. Nice and gentle, nothing, no bouncing. Keep your feet flat on the floor. So you're getting a nice rotation. I'm gonna take my glasses off. I'm making myself dizzy with my glasses on. <laughs> there we go. Gentle twist, no bouncing around here, just nice left and right. Awesome. Hey, so super easy little warm up exercises either with your scarf or with your stick. And then I'm going to go literally through the PowerPoint little sheet that I have with the exercise ideas. And the first one is squatting in and out of a chair. So a nice solid chair, something that's not on wheels, <laughs> something that's not on. You laugh, Jeanette, but <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Make sure it's solid <laughs> and it's not one of those fold up chairs either. Okay, because couch, a couch is great. A couch is lower than a chair usually. So that could be more challenging. So you're literally going to come down, you're going to kiss your bum cheeks to the edge of this chair and then stand up. Your feet are flat on the floor. You're standing on the number 11. So your feet are shoulder width apart or a touch wider. You're going to kiss the chair with your bum cheeks and then stand up. And I want you to push the arms back, reach forward push back. So as you're pushing back, you're getting some nice extension through the shoulder here and really opening up through the chest. Kiss the chair, pull back. Kiss the chair, pull back. Feet flat the whole time. You want to make sure your heels are always touching the floor. And as you stand up, you pull back, 
keeping your body straight and tall, but you're getting that nice stretch. Little kiss of the chair with your bum cheeks, up and down. Good. And then you can play with the height of where you're sitting. So you might have, like I said, a couch usually is lower than the chair in your dining room. So maybe start with the chair in your dining room because it'll be just that little bit higher. So it'll be a little bit more gradual than going mm. straight to the couch. Plus the couch is soft, harder to get out of. Mm -hmm. Marianne, yes. I have a question myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you're doing an exercise like that, do you think about doing a certain number of reps or yeah. do you do it until you get tired? What What's your recommendation there? Yeah. So um, when you're first starting to work out and you're not using tons of resistance, so just your own body weight, I'd say between 12 and 15 repetitions because you want to build up some muscular endurance. You want to build up the ability of the muscle to sustain itself under load. So when you start adding weight and you're going to like, okay, I'm getting stronger and I'm, I'm getting, you know, I feel like I need more challenge and you start grabbing onto, I don't know, your, your bag of books and you're now doing your sit in the chair with more resistance, you will now be at the point where you're like, okay, now I have to see when am I fatiguing? Am I getting to the point where the quality of the movement is no longer as good as it was? Um, you're never gonna go to failure, but you're gonna feel the fatigue. So that's gonna be like in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 repetitions-ish, right? But you're, you're noticing how your body's reacting to the additional resistance. So at first I'd say 15, you know, 10, uh, 12 to 15 repetitions, no resistance, body weight only, then add some resistance and then, then lower the reps down a bit. And the other thing I've noticed, uh, Marianne, is that you're yeah. really tightening your core. And we hear so much about this that a lot of our uh, 55 plus group members, uh, myself included, have lower back issues. And mm -hmm. a lot of it has to come from tightening our core muscles. Hmm. So pause, great, great point. The core is, it's a hot topic. It's been a hot topic for years um, and it does help stabilize the back. So your core is basically your torso, right? It's got, it's the small muscles in your lower back. It's your abdominal, deep fiber abdominal muscles, your pelvic floor and your diaphragm. And that core helps to stabilize the spine and maintain its neutral posture. So that lovely neutral posture is the natural curve of the spine. So a lot of people, I don't know if anybody was like into aerobics in the like eighties and nineties where they would make a stand with our knees bent and then this massive pelvic tilt and then we do all these crazy exercises. <laughs> so we don't do that anymore because that's not natural. In fact, that's pulling the lumbar ligaments out of where they belong to be. So you wanna maintain that tall posture. So if you're thinking about core, it goes hand in hand with thinking about good, tall, strong posture, right? And good, tall, strong posture is opening up through the chest, making sure your chin is, your ears are back over your shoulders, right? Your chin is parallel sort of to the floor here, crown of the head to the ceiling, and that there's some engagement by lifting the hips up and dropping the ribs down. And it can be more complicated and more simple. Um, you know, there's people who are gonna tell you to engage your pelvic floor. So draw your pelvic floor muscles up and in, and belly butt to your spine. But really, I love thinking about tall, strong posture. And if you're standing with tall, strong, tight posture, tight meaning tall and strong, <laughs> as opposed to gripping, then chances are your core is engaged. Um, and yes, as you go through learning more and more about the core, it becomes a little more subtle, right? You can do all sorts of exercises down on the ground that your physiotherapist has showed you, and those are awesome, but they can be a little bit subtle and then hence boring. <laughs> so if I was gonna say something about the core, I'd say, where's your posture? Because this, your core is not doing anything for you here, right? So you gotta find that tall posture. Yeah, it's a really good point. And keep asking questions about core if they, if they continue to come up and I'll see if I can rephrase it a different way or find a different um, 
a different way to describe it. We do have another question here, um, a great one from Barb, who's asking, if you're at home and you're on carpet, would you recommend doing bare feet or having a specific pair of running shoes that you use? Or what, what would you suggest? What's most important is that whatever footing you've got underneath you is not slippery and it's not like unpredictable. So if you're on a carpeted floor and your shoes are slippery on that carpeted floor, go bare feet. But if you can wear shoes and your footing underneath you is good and stable, then that's fine. Um, one thing about one of the benefits of exercising barefoot is you're going to work more intrinsic muscles in your feet. So there's a big advantage to working out barefoot and it's something you can't do in a gym. So if you're home, you can work out barefoot. Uh, absolutely. Um, and um, just whichever surface you're on, just make sure it's good and stable underneath you. That's all. Yeah. And you can toy with shoes or no shoes, depending. No, there's a benefit to the barefoot too. Cool. Good question. I like that question. Um, push-ups. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> push-ups, okay, are so, so important because frankly, you are always gonna have to push yourself up off the floor at some point, whether it's first thing in the morning or after you've done an exercise down on the ground. And if you don't practice it, it's only gonna get harder. And so I did, I don't know if anybody followed the, some people were doing push up challenges in the month of like March and April and stuff. And I like, I'm a hundred percent believer that everybody should be able to do a type of push up at least. And there's a million ways to do them. I'm going to show you some easy ways first. So a wall push up. Let's see if I can turn and I can get up there. There's a pole there. I've just unplugged, but I'll plug myself back in. Okay. So can you guys see me at the pole? Yeah. Okay. Good. So I've got my hands. Let's just pretend this is a nice big wall. Okay. My hands are up on the wall and I'm leaning into it. My hands are at chest height. I'm on my toes. So my heels are up. And then you can do a push up from here. And the closer I get to the wall, the more I stand vertical, clearly the easier it is going to be, right? It's still a great chest exercise, shoulders, triceps, core. And the further I go out on an angle, the harder it will become, right? So you've probably all seen push ups from the knees, right? The box push ups where you're on all fours or when you slide your knees out a little further, but start with the wall push up and give yourself a chance. Then you can take it to the back of the chair. Again, the chair has to be solid, nicely weighted, because as you can see, this is a patio chair. It's not going to suffice, but I, I can do just one or two here. And so now I'm on a greater angle, but I'm not down on the ground, which um, can be really intimidating for uh, somebody starting out with push ups, but such a beautiful full body exercise. Like I said, triceps, chest, shoulders, and then you're focusing on this long, tall, strong posture as well. So, can't really beat a, a good push up. Calf raises off of the ledge. So, you probably all have at least a ledge or a step somewhere. If it's not inside your house at your front door, you would hang off of the ledge. So you'd literally take your heels off the ledge and then you can hold on to the, um, the railing or just the side of the stairs, or you can just put yourself in a doorway and go up and down with your heels. So, so great. You can do that with straight legs or bent legs. So if you do it with bent legs, you're gonna get soleus a little bit more. So, my knees are not moving, they're bent, but they're not moving. So I stay in that bent knee position and then I pop up my heels and that's gonna work lower in the calf muscles. That's right? a very Michael Jackson move right there. Ooh, ow! <laughs> <laughs> I love Michael Jackson. <laughs> so, so calf raises easily done off of a ledge at home. So I do have to show some fun toys because this is a TheraBand. It's just an elastic that A, you can probably just pick up from your physio. If you're a regular client at your physio, I bet you they'll just give you a piece. 
<laughs> and then if you're a regular here at Meadow Park, we also sometimes give these away. Okay, so it's just, a, it's, it comes on a roll. It's a nice stretchy band and a reverse fly is a super awesome exercise for upper back, strong posture, pulling the elastic out to the side, right? Now that's only one exercise that you can do with these. There's so many that you can do with these. You can step on it with one foot and do some bicep curls. You do have to make sure you get yourself an elastic that's long enough, right? So that is gonna be a factor is the length of the elastic. And of course, they do come in different resistances. So this is sort of the medium resistance and then it's color coded, um, which is the stronger and which is the lighter elastic. Um, I'm going through it, so make sure I get these. Oh, good, okay, kicking your bum. <laughs> so a nice hamstring exercise would be literally just standing up tall, pushing your hips forward so that your hips are lifting up towards your ribs, your ribs down, stand tall, and then lift that heel and flex that hamstring muscle. So nice and tall, like so. And if you can picture that your hamstring is like your bicep, and that's literally what you're doing is you're flexing your uh, bicep femoris. That's what it's called. And you would do that on both sides. You can do single leg because that way, without any resistance, you can just isometrically contract that muscle, like squeeze, then let go. Squeeze and then let go. And if you bring up enough tension into that, you will feel it in your core, you will feel it in your hamstrings. So that again, no toys needed. Um, so the other toy you can use for resistance, I talked about jugs of milk or water bottles, but soup cans, the heaviest can of beans in your cover, the heaviest can of soup, in your cupboard that you can get your bits around. Okay, make sure you can get a nice grip. I'm gonna, I'm so lucky I have access to these dumbbells. So I'm gonna show you with the dumbbells, but you can choose any toy for resistance that you have access to. So a lovely front raise. And once again, if you don't have dumbbells and you don't wanna use soup cans because you can't get your grip around it, I've got these grocery bags. So they're down. I can do them one at a time, nice and controlled, body tall, strong posture for front raise. Okay, super functional exercise. You could also take this to out to the side. I'll move the chair so now I can actually, you can go out to the side, either with the dumbbells or with your grocery bags or your soup cans. Marianne, is there an advantage or disadvantage to doing one arm at a time versus doing them at the same time? Excellent question. So you'll find that when you do one arm at a time, you have to sort of stabilize. Like here, you kind of, you're countering yourself, right? You've got this lovely counterbalance. So as soon as you lift up one at a time, there's gonna be a little bit more core activation. On the other side of the coin though, when you lift up two arms at the same time, it's harder because you're just, you're doing more work, right? So one arm at a time, either forward or to the side is just gonna require more balance. It's gonna require more coordination at a, a certain point as well. So yeah, it is a little different. Yeah, so definitely uh, test, it, test it out and how you're standing. So if you wanna work on a little bit more balance, you squeeze your legs together, bring your feet so they are side by side. Now you're a very narrow stance. Right away, this should be a little bit more challenging than standing with your feet apart. And then if you wanna make it harder, you stand in tandem, which is one foot directly in front of the other. So you have, we have one foot on the floor and then the heel would butt up against the toe, right? And now you're standing like you're standing on a tightrope and you're doing those same movements whether you decide you're gonna do bicep curl, singles or front raise, or lap, you're now on this little tight rope of a platform and it's gonna be that much harder. Great balance work. Um, oh yeah, of course, I, I mean, I already kind of touched on this one, but grocery bag bicep curl, right? I mean, who doesn't need to have strong biceps in order to go grocery shopping? So single arm, double arm. You could also change the position of your arms. So 
where I had it there, I had my palms facing forward and I was curling my pinky up towards the outside of my body a little bit. But if I hammer curl, that means thumb up, pinky down, and now I'm curling my thumb towards my sh the middle of the, my shoulder. So if I do without the, the bags, you can see it probably better. So, um, and with hammer curl with dumbbells, your, your dumbbells are up and down, right? So your way you're holding the dumbbell. And then the other position, the classic is your dumbbells are facing horizontal to the ground and your pinky kind of goes slightly out a little bit. And that just changes how it recruits the head of the bicep. So it's just a little different. You do wanna make sure full range of motion. So with all these exercises, use your full range of motion, okay? There's not a whole lot of benefit unless you're looking to build some sort of max strength. And that's not really the phase, usually that's not the phase we're in at this point. Um, you wanna use that joint to its ex full extent, your comfortable full range of motion. So don't start like, <laughs> unless you're gonna go to the club later. Do you really? Anyway. Um, <laughs> that's a different dance move altogether, different. different. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, split squat is a great one. So we, do, we haven't done a lot of leg exercises. So you can do a split squat, which is, can you see my feet? Where do I stand? Yeah, you can. If you, if you back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now we can almost see your feet. Pr pretty much. Yeah, there, okay, there you go. <laughs> One foot directly in front, flat on the floor, soft knee. On my toe in the back, heel up, okay? And stand nice and tall. And I'm using the chair for a little bit of support. You don't have to use it, but a split squat is down and up, comes up with your feet stationary. All that's moving is the body up and down. What's nice about having the chair directly in front of you is you can't start going forward, the chair's in your way. So there's that bonus of having the chair, the back of the chair here, you can't start lunging forward. You go down and up. And then of course you'd have to do both sides, right? You'd have to do your 10, 12, 15 repetitions and then do the other side. And make sure your knee doesn't go tracking past your toe. Yeah. Those, I didn't want to go crazy with exercises because there's like a, so many ways to, to mix it all up. But that in a nutshell is just some exercise you can do with very little equipment needed. Yeah, and I'm willing to take questions or if you have a specific exercise you want to cue on or anything like that. Awesome. Thank you, Marianne. I'm well, I'll extend that offer to the to the audience. If there's something that Marianne has uh, not touched on that you would like to ask her, you're welcome to do so now. We've got a few minutes to do that. Um, if there's an activity that you are hoping to pursue this summer and you're wondering, I don't know how to warm up for that activity or mm. how to cool down from that activity. Mm. Um, I know that, you know, my partner and I are guilty of not doing the the prep and the post. Um, you oh. know, we're brazen young people <laughs> just going on mountain bike rides and not stretching afterwards. And I'm sure that's I'm sure that's not advisable. <laughs> I, I had a question, uh, Marianne. Hi, I've, Marianne. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, I found um, recently I have trouble doing push-ups because I guess I've got arthritis in my wrist. And I wonder, I, I know I can do them on the wall, not on the floor. Are there any other modifications? Sometimes putting dumbbells on the floor and pushing off of that or what? Absolutely. Yeah, so to save your wrist, you can see these dumbbells are hex. So they're not going to roll around because they're a hexagon shape. So they'll lay flat on the floor and they take your hand, your fingers off the floor. So you could do your push-ups where your hand is, the dumbbells on the floor and you can do your push-up that way. But another option that's even easier if you don't have a hex dumbbell is you give yourself a little ledge to prop yourself up on. So I'm gonna, sh I have a mat here. So this is just my yoga mat, okay? I'm gonna bring, I think I'll just bring this down. You guys can see 
down on the ground here. So you use your mat, let me see if this stays up. You use your mat as a ledge. Okay. So you have this, all this extra mat at the front, you roll it up and make yourself a little ledge. And then you hang your fingers and your, the base of your fingers off the ledge and your palm is now on the floor, on the mat, pardon me. And from here, you're gonna undo a little bit of the pressure on the wrist. It might not be enough. If not, then you do a bigger ledge so that you can get up higher and you press your palm into the mat and you lean into it that way. So there's that option as well. I mean, they have actual wedges. You can buy a mat that's in the shape of a wedge and you literally hang off of the wedge. It's not really necessary. All you need is a little extra lift off okay. of the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm really intrigued about these upcoming walks because we do a lot of mountain biking, both downhill and cross country. And we, you know, I think I'm more of an outdoor kind of stretching and getting ready for my sport. But I, too, admit that we don't do enough pre and post bike riding right. um, stretching. So my hamstrings are often very tight. <laughs> and hamstrings are classically tight on everybody. It's, it's mm -hmm. a pretty normal thing. And then they only get tighter with activity. So uh, yeah, they do need, they do need a little uh, a love every once in a while. And then one of my favorite hamstring stretches is, so I just imagine this is a wall as opposed to the chair. So if you were, if you could find a threshold where you could stick your leg down one wall and your leg up the other wall. So, so you're at a threshold and you're, can you guys see me? Am I disappearing there? Laying down, you have one leg on the wall one leg straddling the threshold of the corner. And then you can just relax in your hamstring stretch. You don't have to like fight and <laughs> grab. You can, you can just lay there. And if you need less of a stretch, you back up. So your, your bum's not so close to the wall, right? Um, and that's such a lovely stretch for hamstring because there's no fighting. There's no resistance you're building up in that stretch. And you have your feet up. <laughs> And then, of course, you do the other leg. And it's, uh, yeah, so it's a lovely way to get a relaxing hamstring stretch. I, I am a person who's guilty of um, when I mountain bike. Well, I'm not guilty of. I, I get really tense through my chest and my <laughs> arms. Um, I guess I feel like that fly, the reverse fly you described, could be a good chest opener for that, hey? The great strengthening for the upper back mm -hmm. to sort of counter everything that we do in front of us, whether it's computer or biking or uh, driving long distances. A great chest stretch that's one of my favorites is again on the ground. I love stretching on the ground. But <laughs> so one hand is bent and flat on the floor, or arm is bent. The other one is stretched out beside you, and then you just gently turn away. And if, if the head is too much, like if it's like, oh, the neck is all tight, you can rest your head down. Like you don't have to hold your head up and then um, poke yourself this way. So you're pushing away and this whole side of the body gets a lovely stretch. And you know, there's the classic stretches at the wall where you, you do that when standing, but that lying down is so lovely. <laughs> um, Marianne, Barb has just asked, do you, do you have any um, stretches to recommend before and after kayaking? Mm, okay, so I'm so glad we're talking about warming up and cooling down too. So I absolutely, I'll try to get to that. But what I wanna say about warming up and cooling down and stretching is when you're doing something pre-activity, try to keep it dynamic. In other words, moving. It doesn't have to be like dynamic, like crazy. I just mean moving so that you're going through full ranges of motion with movement. And that's what you do before a workout or before an activity. Like that leg swinging I made you do at the beginning, that's a, that would be a dynamic stretch. And then after a workout, post-exercise is when it's time to start relaxing, bringing your heart rate down, and your body is warm already and ready and more pliable to do more um, more static stretching, 
you're going to cool down obviously as you go. So you just want to be conscious of that. If you're outdoors, you might need to layer back up with clothing to stay warm. Um, kayaking is, if, if I'm not mistaken, because I'm not a kayaker, very chest and shoulder dominant and ab dominant. So you're seated kayaking and you're paddling that one paddle both sides. So lots of rotation through the spine, lots of abdominal exercise. So you asked Barb about after kayaking, what to do? Uh, both before and after. Both before and after. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like as far as dynamic stuff, I would simulate the activity, right? So I'm kneeling right now, but I would simulate the movement exaggerated obviously you're not doing this as you're kayaking but you would do exaggerated motions of what you are about you know you're previewing in your in your kayaking trip um and then some side slides i'm going to back up here for the abdominals to get stretched sideways and then some rotation through the spine a little higher up like so and then because you're seated for so long kayaking, I would do some nice dynamic stretching for the hip flexors as well. It's where you step back and stretch on the way back. So again, those are all movement oriented. You're moving through these ranges of motion. And then post kayak, it would be stretching the chest, stretching the shoulders, stretching the neck, turning your palm forward, thumb up, um, and then probably your lower back from all of the seat sitting. So some nice lower back stretch, either a cat cow or even a, a lovely child's pose. There's so many lovely yoga stretches too. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, it is just past the hour. And so it is time for us to wrap up. I could listen to this all day. <laughs> it's so interesting. <laughs> Thank um, you. But thank you so much, Marianne. This has been so informative. Um, those of you, I mean, if you're if you're in the audience and um, you're frantically taking notes, this is being recorded. So don't worry, <laughs> you can watch it again um, to see all of Marianne's exercises and you can play it over and over again if you need, you know, to make sure you're using the right form and things like that. Um, Kathy, I think you have a few things to share on behalf of Mac. Go ahead. Well, yeah, and I think it's great. Um, and Marianne, can you just share with us what are you doing in June for the Tuesday, Thursday groups? I'd really like to hear about that for our membership. Yeah. Sure. So the power walking class is called Power Walking Workout or Power Walk Power Walk Workout. And it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, Tuesdays is at Oh my goodness, 11 to 1215. Thursdays is 930 to 1045. It's a, you must sign up for it. Um, it's, it does fill up because we're still being told we're only allowed to have 10 people in groups outdoors. Now, unless that changes, we can get into bigger groups, but at the moment, the current PHO is maximum 10 people outdoors even. So that's the size of the group. It's, um, which I th actually think it means nine participants and one instructor. I'm not positive on that, Don't, but they are selling out. Like the, the May sessions, uh, they sold out on the Thursdays. And so if you're interested in the June ones, they're, they've already been opened up to registration. Um, if there's a huge demand, like if the wait list gets huge, we can talk about uh, you know other dates and other times and so on. Then of course, um, so that's the outdoor one, power walk workout. Then the um, Gentle Fit for Seniors is the class that we've been running since September. It's three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. And we have different times for all of those days on purpose because some people wanted to, you know, they work at 9 a.m. and they wanted an afternoon. So anyway, 9 a.m. on Monday, 11 a.m. on Wednesday, one o'clock on Friday, each an hour long Zoom online class where we lead you through fitness exercises with your home your own home equipment and it's a uh, strength-based stuff mobility fantastic well that that was all my questions and okay. uh, on behalf of whistler mature action community group thank you jeanette for facilitating today's yeah. session and provo for being our guest speaker we will 
certainly engage with our membership as the health authority allows us to get together in the future. We will keep you updated on our website, whistlermac.org, and also on our Facebook page. We are ma mainly updating that. We even have WhatsApp if you want to join our group. And my name is Kathy White. I'm the chair. Sherilyn Chris is also on our social committee. She's our chair for the social committee on our board. And it's such a pleasure. And, and I hope everyone has a very fit and fantastic summer. And then we're going to try and do these sessions again in the autumn and we'll keep everybody up to date. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kathy. Um, and as a last reminder, while the RMOW is just dealing with these server issues, the best place to find information about Meadow Park or the library is whistler.ca. That is your number one hub for all of that information. Um, I believe that uh, Meadow Park is still taking online bookings through Perfect Mind. The link is there if you go to whistler.ca or you can find the phone number to reach the center during open hours. So you can definitely still book all of these classes that Marianne is talking about. Um, and it sounds like it's going to be a fun summer. <laughs> All right. Well, woohoo. Well, thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Sherilyn. And thank you to everybody who has been attending these sessions. And we will see you all soon. All right. Thank you.